This lesson is on verifying properties of triangles. And in the first example, we're given a uh, triangle with vertices at uh, the points A, B, and C here. Uh, a is the point 3, 2. And so we'll plot that point. And B is the point 3, 8. And then C is at 11, 2. So there's the three vertices. And we'll join them, drawing the three line segments to make our right angle triangle. And we're asked to verify that the midpoint of the hypotenuse is the same distance, equidistant from all three vertices. So the first thing we should do is find where the midpoint is here. And so here's my midpoint formula. Now we're finding the midpoint of BC. So these are the two points that we're finding the midpoint between B and C. So we are add the x coordinates divide by 2, 3, and 11 are the x coordinates. And we'll add the y-coordinates and divide by 2. 8 and 2 will be added to divide by 2 for the y-coordinate. So 3 and 11 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. 8 and 2 add to 10 divided by 2, of course, is 5. So the midpoint of the hypotenuse here is that we'll call D is the point 7, 5. So there's the point 7, 5. So what we have to do now is find the distance from D to B d to c and d to a and we're asked to show that all three of those distances are the same hence the word equidistant so first of all there's the distance formula and first of all i'm going to find the distance from a to d so notice my subscript here the distance from a to d so we're using the point a here and the point d so subtracting the x coordinates 7 minus 3 is going to be squared here and then 5 minus 2 will subtract for the difference between the y coordinates squared as well. Now 7 minus 3 is 4 and 4 squared is 16. 5 minus 2 is 3 and 3 squared is 9. So adding 16 and 9 underneath the square root will get 25 and the square root of 25 is 5. So the distance from the midpoint of the hypotenuse to A is 5 units exactly. Now I'll find the distance from D up to point B. So we're using uh, point B here, 3, 8, and the 7, 5 point. So 7 take away 3 squared, and uh, we're going to subtract the 5 and 8, 5 minus 8 squared as well. So 7 minus 3 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. 5 minus 8 is negative 3, and negative 3 squared is 9. Notice we have exactly the same thing we had underneath the square root here. 16 and 9 add to 25, and of course the square root of 25 is 5 again. One more distance to find, the distance from D down to C, and of course D is the midpoint of this line segment, so we should get 5 again. So between points D and C, here's D and there's C, so 11 minus 7 squared, and we'll also subtract 2 and 5, 2 minus 5 squared as well. So that's 4, and 4 squared again is 16. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and negative 3 squared is 9. And so once again, the root of 25 is 5. So all three distances are 5. So we could conclude, therefore, that the midpoint of the hypotenuse in this right triangle is equidistant from all three vertices, all three corners of the triangle. Okay, one more example on page two. We're given this triangle with vertices at uh, A, B, and C. So let's draw the triangle first. There's point A, the point one, zero. B is at five, eight. So there's the point B. And then C over here is at 11, two. And we'll draw the three line segments that make our triangle. Now we're asked to verify that the line segment joining the midpoints of AB, so the midpoint here of AB, and the midpoint of BC, we're going to draw in that line segment and find those midpoints first, that that, is, that line segment is parallel to AC, the other side in the triangle, and half its length. So let's find these midpoints first. There's the midpoint formula. I'll call D the midpoint of AB. So points A and B, we would add 5 and 1 and 8 and 0. So 1 and 5 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. 0 and 8 add to 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the midpoint of AB, I'll call it the point D, is the point 3, 4. 
Now we'll find also the midpoint of BC over here that I'll call E. So B and C, this is point B, this is point C over here, so we'd be adding 11 and 5 divided by 2, and also the 2 and the 8 over here divided by 2. So 11 and 5 is 16 divided by 2 is 8. 2 and 8 add to 10, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that's the point E, the midpoint of BC. So we'll connect those two, draw in the line segment between E and D. Now, so we're asked to verify that that line segment is parallel to AC and half its length. To show it's parallel to AC, we'll use slopes. I'm going to find the slope of DE and the slope of AC, and if those two line segments are parallel, the slope should be the same. So first of all, for DE, here's the slope formula. Remember, it's uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So these are the two points. We're finding the slope between those two. So the y-coordinates are 5 and 4. So 5 minus 4 in the numerator divided by 8 minus 3 in the denominator. 5 minus 4 is 1, and 8 minus 3 is 5. So the slope of DE is 1 fifth. Now we'll find the slope of AC using point A here and point C. So the y-coordinates are 2 and 0, so 2 minus 0 in the numerator, and we'll subtract 1 from 11 in the denominator. That's the x-coordinate subtracted. And so this simplifies to 2 over 10, and of course 2 over 10 reduces to 1 fifth. So those two line segments do have the same slope, so they must be parallel. That answers A. In B, we're asked to show that uh, DE is half the length of AC. So we need the distance formula. So let's find the distance from point D to point E, the length of that line segment. And again, we're finding the distance between these two points. So 8 minus 3 squared underneath the square root plus 5 minus 4 squared. Now 8 minus 3 is 5, and 5 squared would be 25 and then this would be 1, 1 squared is 1. So underneath the square root we're adding 25 and 1, that's where the 26 comes from. So the length of DE joining those two midpoints is the square root of 26. So the last part we're going to take a look at here is the length of AC. We have to show that of course this is uh, going to be half the length of AC. So this is A and this is C over here, so it's 11 minus 1 squared, and then 2 minus 0 squared for the y2 minus y1 part. So 11 minus 1 is 10, and 10 squared is 100. 2 minus 0 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So we're adding 100, and then 4, so that's where the square root of 104 comes from. Now, looking at those radicals, it's hard to tell that this is double this. But if you take the root of 104, and 104 is actually the root of 4, is actually, sorry, 4 times 26. So I can write root 104 as the root of 4 times the root of 26, because once again, 4 times 26 equals 104. So there's where the 2 in the, this side is doubled. The square root of 4 is 2. So we could write this as 2 root 26. And then that shows more clearly that this is double this, because 2 root 26 means 2 root 26, so this is exactly double this length here. So concluding then, thus DE is parallel to AC because they have the same slope, and it is half the length. This is the root of 26, this is 2 root 26. And that's the end of the lesson.